Hello and welcome back to another video with me, Mioni, for Final Fantasy XIV. After a little bit of a nap, after being up since 3 in the morning, basically preparing and doing the summary video, I thought it'd be nice if we just had a nice sit down and looked at the uh, benchmark trailer. The benchmark itself, which actually features all of this footage, comes out tomorrow, but there might be some interesting things that you may have missed or I may have missed, so join me in the comment section and let me know what I have missed. But most importantly, I think, uh, trying to sort of figure out what all the job abilities are is probably going to be the the main attraction for this but of course there are other things hidden within so let's lower the volume a bit and have a look so of course this debuted today the 13th of april and everybody worldwide was ecstatic you'll be able to actually create female rothgar as well as your typical character creation and benchmark settings you can recreate your character and see it in the trailer instead of a warrior of light as of tomorrow so here we are we're on the boat bit of a downgrade from the cg cutscene but still awesome to see it in engine and of course the warrior of lights there is a viper a lot of people are criticizing this uh, this face i think that looks really good personally Honestly, you know, there's obviously going to be a bit of variance between a CG cutscene and an in-game engine-based thing, but I think this looks pretty cool. I especially like the eyes on this, and I guess the stubble is nice. I would have liked to see slightly more hair, sort of follicles on this. Uh, it looks a little bit painted on for my liking, but not bad, is it? Not bad, considering, you know, how much of a leap this is for the game forwards. Moving on from that then, we've got a lovely sort of zoom out Tulialal. there it is look all those mountains and that beautiful swordfish there was that i think that was the swordfish so dawn trail then who is not excited for dawn trail i think that's an easier question so the official benchmark then once you actually play this uh tomorrow you will have sort of statistics everywhere and you will not have it completely blank like this um, I believe you can toggle that off in the options menu, but this is the the entire purpose of this is to check if your PC is going to, you know, live up to your expectations or if you want to update things. So this first segment then, obviously, we're in the jungles, just right next to Tulialal itself. This is probably one of the first zones. We can see the huts in the background. And um, yeah, there's not a lot to really take from this. Other than the Warrior of Light is is finding it very difficult to find the X on the spot. <laughs> so this then gives us a fair example of what the zone layout might look like. I know this is very, you know, just a sketch, but we can imagine that the basic to topography rather would look a bit like this. And um, obviously we've got like a, in relation to like a sundial or a compass, and there's like a wing there. So it's kind of like find the point between the two. Yeah, this will be fun. Actually, uh, this seems to be an archway. Maybe that's an entrance to the city itself. I have no idea. Very cool stuff, though. He's like, hmm, which way is north? That is a good question. Also, the Chocobo. I, I don't remember the last time we saw the Warrior of Lights Chocobo in a cutscene or, a, you know, in, in, in a long time ago, uh, basically. I know everything within the benchmark. Do not take it on immediate value a lot of people don't understand that the benchmark probably won't make sense in a couple of years time when you watch back uh, this footage because you'll be like wait hold on a minute that wasn't how it was in in the final version like typically uh, the stormblood uh, benchmark was the most egregious with having like bosses in arenas of other bosses and things like that that didn't exist so just take it with a pinch of salt enjoy what you can see and they're obviously demonstrating the foliage here look at that absolutely gorgeous he's like yeah that way oh we've got an underwater scene here so obviously there'll be spear fishing in dawn trail as you would imagine all sorts of other underwater activities i'm not sure if there's any any tribes underwater this time around or anything like that i do quite like the ability to just dive though even if it's just for spear fishing things like that there are never any monsters underwater in 14 so you don't have to worry about that these fish look awesome this scene then we've got uh obviously <laughs> the shell creatures in a sort of like cove with uh, a nice pier there this beautiful crystal blue water with the shallows here presumably you can go diving in here in the edge of a forest 
Very interesting. Not a lot to to kind of. And it's probably like Waldo hidden in a tree or something. There's probably an Easter egg somewhere that I'm missing. But uh, I love the shadows. Look at this the soft shadow technique with the new lighting. Oh my goodness, it looks so good. It is a night and day improvement across the board, in my opinion. There's our Chocobo wearing, I think this is, I don't know what barding this is actually. It's probably old barding, obviously Viper AF gear. We've got ourselves a pathway here through the forest. Look at that, all the foliage. Taking a drink. If this isn't an emote, by the way, in Dawn Trail, I'll be very disappointed. Like taking a sip from your, what's it called? Oh, I forget, a carafe? Not a carafe, that's a coffee thing. What's the thing? The it's it's made of like skin usually, isn't it? And then like oh I forget, the water jug thing, the I can't remember. You've seen it in every Western or every like Indiana Jones film ever. I want that as an emote. Got some beasties running by here. These beasties look, if you look close, they kind of look like really small monsters from Monster Hunter or something. Like rhinos or some kind of armad armored Armadillo rhinos? I don't know, they look cool. Even the eyes of those creatures are well detailed. Flamingos flying by, of course. Uh, this always reminds me of Secret of Mana every time I see uh, flamingos fly by for some reason. Same as that one dungeon in Shadowbringers. Then we get a nice uh, establishing shot of the jungle. And of course, with one of the encampments or areas up, ab up ahead, it really shows you the denseness of the jungle itself with all the different foliage, the ferns, like the grass, everything just looks 10 times more you know, realistic, but not in a direction that would detract from what I would have hoped to have seen. These leaves are huge, by the way. I, just, I was looking the other day on the PS4 of um, the current gen graphics and seeing that leaves in the game currently on the PS4, at least on those settings, uh, the lowest settings, um, have a white outline around them and comparing it to this is just it's a completely different game, isn't it? Absolutely just mind-blowing So this is another segment then obviously we've seen this if you've seen the trailer for Dawn Trail before with the waterfalls on the end of these big long spiky mountains, I'm not sure if these are naturally formed I'm sure the game will tell us with lore and I can bet your ass that there's gonna be a sightseeing log on at least one of those. <laughs> there has to be. All these waterfalls at the bottom. Got some more uh, more monsters here being fought by various warriors of light. Again, take this with a pinch of salt because the likelihood is that this will not happen. This area kind of reminds me of a reverse lakeland, like an autumnal lakeland, if you see what I mean with the trees and the, the color of the, the foliage around the water's edge there. So, maybe we should probably slow this down uh, in just a second, but this is going to probably look at some of the job abilities. We've got these giant fish here, we've got Malbros. So, let's slow this down a little bit, and uh, we will hopefully be able to make out some stuff. So, first of all, this massive explosion. So, let's go back a bit. We'll play in slow mo. That's a gunbreaker. So that's a new gunbreaker ability. It's striking the ground, causing this like massive explosion. Let's see that again. Uh, it looks like it would be sort of thing that would be an off global cooldown or something like that. Um, as you can probably see with a follow up though. Did I do a follow up? Ah, yes. So I think that was Fated Circle as a follow up. So that's a really flashy ability for gunbreaker. Some kind of. Not necessarily an AoE, but it kind of looks like it would do AoE damage considering there's like fire everywhere and explosions. So that's probably a new AoE uh, combo, or rather an off-global. And then we go straight into Dragoon. Now this is a really interesting one. I was trying to figure out what this was. I thought it was like a tentacle. But it, I think that's actually like a wing of Nidhogg. At least I think it is. Yeah, these are Nidhogg's wings, I think. So I think we've got, for a Dragoon ability, the ability to pierce our enemies with, uh, with Hot Wing. <laughs> uh, it seems to be like 
if if you see what they're doing in in this before it's cast i think that's rising thrust let's see can you just see it yeah so we do this okay cool so i don't know it seems like that would be an off global because there was nothing like a, a prerequisite for that i would imagine this is a brand new off global then without any information course there's the spike straight through to Marlboro. we've got these funny looking bug creatures over here we've got a bunch of people fighting out uh, this is a sage if i believe my eyes and this is the new sage ability then so it's a big aoe where the new lifts uh spin above the enemy or it could be an upgrade to toxicon not sure this is a really cool pattern, though, on the floor. I think most people will agree. Um, yeah, some kind of spiral, giant AoE. Hmm. It could be a new button, I, I guess. But it also kind of reminds me of Toxicon. I don't know. It's like a lightning ability. You'll see a lot of the abilities this time seem to be lightning-focused. There's a lot of Levin flowing through the scenes. Don't know if that means anything in particular, but... That looks awesome, doesn't it? Okay, immediately after that, Sage, we have Black Mage chilling out over here. Uh, this then, I, I, this looks like either a new ability or maybe an upgrade from Thunder 4. Like maybe this is Thunder 5? I don't know. It's going to be a good question, isn't it? What do you think that is? Do you, do you think that's an, a new ability? It does look like it's 11 strike. Yeah, that is enormous. I think that's Thunder 5, personally. Um, with this, like, lightning ball that sort of pierces the enemy as it goes off. Hmm, that sort of AOE cone. Very interesting, very interesting. That's what I think it is, anyway, an upgrade for, uh, for Thunder. And then I believe the next character we see is a summoner, right? Now, interestingly enough, I don't know if this is intentional, but the actual creature that they have summoned doesn't appear to be on screen. Um, but it does look like we have another lightning-based ability in the form of this. And that reminds me very heavily of Levin Strike, I think it is called, right? Ramu's ability? Ramu's ability? What do you think? So here's my tinfoil hat moment. Or what I would love to happen. I would love for Ramu to be a new summon. Or like a Demi Ramu or something like that. Or maybe even Ixion, I guess. But look at that. <laughs> Big AoE explosion. Very cool. And I do like the uh, the garb here in this low res <laughs> that we're looking at. But yeah, I think that's... Uh, it, I mean, what lightning... We don't have a lightning ability really, do we, on summoner? That's cool, though. If we do get Ramu, then a lot of summoners will be happy with that. Although, as soon as we want one thing, we'll want all of the other summons as well, like Shiva <laughs> and like Leviathan. That'd be cool. But uh, this is the first one we've seen. We'll have to wait until, you know, any footage that gets put out from the media tour or anything from people, see what we get, or any of the job um, action trailer, or any of the information on the next letter from a producer, which is actually this next uh, month in May. So next, I believe... All right, so this is a monk. Oh my goodness, did you see that? Let's go back again. All right, so monk is charging up an ability. This looks like it would be a normal global cooldown skill. It's like some kind of like whip animation and then summons like this tiger. <laughs> but sort of goes forward and snaps at the target. I don't know. Maybe this is just a visual upgrade of something we have before. I'm not sure. But that is a cool looking ability, isn't it? It's had a glow up, whatever it is. I like the spinning around animation. I'm not, I, I, again, I don't play monk. I'm not a monk main. So maybe uh, this is like snap punch or something. It could be because some of the monk abilities, at least in my opinion, need a bit of a glow up visually. That looks pretty badass though, doesn't it? And then you've got this kind of like almost Biako black energy after you've made the hit look. 
kind of like calligraphy. Then we have Dancer, which, uh, as most people will f be familiar with, the uh, this sort of animation from the Limit Break and other things. Uh, so they're throwing their Chakram into the air. Let's have a look. Can we get a better shot of this? Um, and then it rains that ability down on its on the enemy. So I think what they've done is gone. People really like the LB, which people do, including myself. You can see it in the background, look with the strikes there, and it looks like they've put that into a new ability. Um, yeah, it reminds me a little bit of Saber Dance. That's cool though. It does look like a single target though. It doesn't look like it's a large scale, although it could be, I guess. Yeah, that looks like... I don't know, actually. Is that Malbro getting hit by that? Anyone's guess, isn't it? All of the guesswork's coming out today. Looking pretty badass, though, in that new outfit. Uh, next, we have Paladin. We've got a warrior there, but it goes past the Paladin. And then we get a close-up, right? I'm forgetting where I am with this. So we've got a flyby of the sort of carnage that is being wrought. In the background, the Warrior of Light is looking on, going, huh, battle, eh? Yes. So then we come to this other, oh, there we go. Okay. So then there's this massive thing, which this is most likely one of the fate event monsters, similar to Arcotania or, you know, um, the one in, what's it called? Omicron thingy. I forget its name now. Chi, one of those sorts of, uh, or uh, Davidipa. One of those, I believe. They usually show uh, those sorts of models in the benchmarks. Uh, so, of course, we've got Paladin here. Swiping away. Do we really see much here? We do see a little bit. It's really hard to see at this sort of fast motion. Okay, so he floats down. What's going on over here? So there's some kind of explosion. And then... Wow, look at that. That slash attack, so the Viper comes in, does his Viper sort of downward thrust. Here we go, this is what I was talking about. So this is where the Paladin just goes and slams the ground with their sword. And it's got this kind of like quake effect where it's got a cone. And then lightning comes out of where, where they struck the ground. I think that's so cool. Look at this. <laughs> Sound effects sold separately. Really like that. Um, yeah. It's it's lightning based. Everything seems to be very lightning based. I don't know if that's an intentional nod towards something we don't know. But this probably will be what an AOE upgrade of uh Requesi Cat or something like that. Just at a guess. Or it could be a new ability, but that looks awesome. I love the motion of that, how they're swinging that. So, of course, now we have Red Mage. Now, Red Mage looks incredible. Uh, so they're jumping into the air here. You couldn't really see that too well. Let's start from here. And it performs this attack that causes these, like, rose thorns to surround the target. So this looks like it would be uh, an off-global or just, a, a you know, an ability that we don't see the, the start of. Um, but... Yeah, apart from that, it's obviously a single target ability. I'm not sure where they're going to fit things into rotations, things like that. Of course, a lot of the jobs are going to probably be changed quite a bit, although there's not supposed to be that many significant changes, so maybe this fits in somewhere to your rotation. It does look cool, though. I do like the fact that you're literally strangling an enemy with rose thorns and shredding it apart. I think that's pretty cool. Very cool indeed. Next then, as we zoom past the warrior, we have a samurai. So this is another leap ability. And then they're performing this giant like vertical slice. So they go upwards with a swipe. All right, so let's go back a bit. We go upwards with a slice, ready? And that looks so cool. And you'll also see there's a AOE cone coming from it as well. So this is, um, wow. I don't know, maybe this is, this looks like an off-global, but it could be put into something else and they could have just triggered it for this animation. So there's not too much we can read in. It has that conal effect that's similar to other cones that we've seen uh, already in the game and indeed from stuff like, um, uh, what's it called? Ogi Nag Nagagiri, I forget what it's called now. Uh, Namakiri, that's it. 
And yeah, I don't know. It looks cool though, doesn't it? Really, really nice. So nice conal slash ability. Pretty cool. I would imagine that this is a, an AOE and a, a single target then. So it just like cleaves off. Very nice stuff. Next up, I believe we have a machinist here firing what appears to be <laughs> a circular saw that shreds into the enemy. Like, hold on a minute. This is sick. Look at this. So after the slice. So here's the machinist prepping the ability with this spinning blade that's got like molten hot blade ends to it. And it's like a saw blade from something that you would like cut down a forest with. So I don't know. It looks really good, doesn't it? And then you've got a separate sort of attack from this where it's like doing damage progressively. And there does appear to be like some kind of follow up, maybe. Very interesting. And then next we've got Astrologian. Now Astro is supposedly getting a huge overwork, like rework. Um, so this is to do with a massive star. Uh, wow. So this is um, some kind of stylized star. This is appearing above your character's head and not the enemy. And I, it, I don't know, maybe some kind of buff? It seems to be a buff look because we're getting the, the stars applied to other people. So I'm not really sure. Maybe it's a heal of some sort. Maybe it's a shield. I don't know. Let's see that again. It does look very flashy, though. I think a lot of Astros are going to be excited to see what they're going to do with their job since they mentioned a bigger yeah, sort of rework for them specifically. Uh, so they fit better into the current game. Then we have, obviously, over here a ninja that seems to be using health frog of some form. But like an upgrade with everything just bursts into deathly blue fire. That's pretty cool. I love the way that that animation sticks around for a little bit as well. Look at that. Awesome. So an upgrade to health frog. Sorted for ninjas. Uh, then I think... Yeah, this, I think, is White Mage. So it looks like um, purple energy, right? Do we get a close-up? I forget if we get a close-up of that. I mean, we do. Yeah, we don't get a close-up of that. So it's only in this sort of couple of seconds. Yeah. So this purple energy. Yeah. I don't know, maybe that's part of the star or something? Maybe it's the star fading? I'm not really sure. Hmm. I don't know what that- oh yeah, that was probably just the star, wasn't it? So then we have this scene where the monster gets slayed. Awesome source. And then we move on to the next part of the benchmark, which looks at all of the other, you know, parts of the world. Let's speed this back up. We've got ourselves, obviously, some Disciple of Hand and Land Love. Of course, this gear looks absolutely beautiful. So this is the new Crafted and Gatherer stuff. I, I love the way that leather looks now in Dawn Trail. A lot of it is going to be backdated. Um, they mentioned quite a lot of sets, and they progress through those throughout Dawn Trail and beyond. They're going to upgrade stuff in the past so that it's all, um, you know, eventually the game's going to all look like this, and it looks absolutely beautiful. We're in some kind of zone here. With some kind of, I don't know, desert-y vibes, maybe? And some blue lagoon. Kind of reminds me a bit of Diadem for some reason. Look at the foliage, by the way, on this. Absolutely beautiful. Then we've got ourselves some miners in the background and some fishes. And then presumably, yeah, we've got another miner over there. Hardly working or working hard. We've got a blacksmith over here. They're just basically showing you, this, you know, you're represented. This fella, though, I don't know what race this is but it's cool it's like a cyclops creature we've got some bunnies reading some books we've got some moblins right because they're moblins in this part of the world not goblins these fellas though these like sorry not cyclops are they but like bug-eyed i don't know bug-eyed men those look cool and of course we've got ourselves this outfit that i really really want by the way looks absolutely amazing there's some really, really cool glam on this, and we've got a male here in the white mage artifact gear from level 100. Bar there. Looking good, eh? There's a dark knight. Yeah. And there's Wukla Mutt. 
and Kryle. So this is probably, again, don't read into this too much. Look at the detail on this, on the rocks there. I wouldn't have usually noticed that in previous trailers and things like that. Like you can see the detail on the map. She holds up this beautiful stone that they seem to be collecting for some reason. The bug guy's like, here's where you'll find more of those, perhaps, on this map. And the Warrior of Light's like, oh, why didn't I think to look there? Maybe I just went for the big X instead. Nod. I see the nod still there. Uh, this is actually a tribe, isn't it? One of the tribal races uh, with a daily tribe. I forget the name of them off the top of my head, but this is their slight ceremonial wear, uh, which kind of reminds me of a penguin for some reason with the nose uh, visor. Nose visor? We'll go with nose visor. So we'll probably see those in Urca Pacha, which I presume this is part of. Got uh, Bun Bun there. Look at the back of the White Mage gear. Oh, it looks so good. But bear in mind that gear you might already be wearing might look this good as well. So it's going to be really interesting to see what glam looks good. And uh, But this does look good though, doesn't it? It really does. Wukla Mat here, there. With a sort of size comparison in terms of height. And they're off on their adventure. Look, the Warriors of Light. Notice we get a load of llamas. A load of llamas going off into the distance in Urkapacha. Got some nice foliage. That's a lot of llamas. As uh, a hunt train appears. <laughs> Someone has done their mental roulettes very clearly. I don't think there's any new mounts here. No. I don't uh, recognize any that are different. So this is one of the Aetherites in one of the towns in Urkapacha. We got all of this surrounding village, sort of Peruvian sort of style. We got some beasties, some yaks roaming. We got cactuars, of course, flipping out. These seem to be um, mountainous cactuars, slightly different than the desert variants. And they also, you know, have these really weird sort of little stumpy feet in comparison to their uh, desert brothers, which is interesting, like stumps. And then you've got this long mountainous area with these. Very interesting spired like flowers. More encampments. We've got some more llamas. Very cool. And then we've got this massive mountain that they deliberately fade to black from because they don't want to see what's in there. But presumably that's the Dungeone. And speaking of, this then is in the clouds. So this will probably be at the top of that mountain range or maybe a different mountain range. But this is very clearly a dungeon. As you can tell with the music change. Look at those mobs. Oh, dude, this oh, this place looks amazing with the neon sort of ice kind of crystal lighting here. It just looks so much better. Think about the monster that you, you think looks the coolest in our game. So, for example, like the Elthers or something like that. You know, like the big yetis with the rainbow colors from Eureka. Can you imagine what those are going to look like? Oh, my goodness. Got another scene here with another section of the same dungeon, I believe, because of the blue purple rocks. Got some uh, some Benus or zoos up here. Got ourselves another one of those, a close up. Can't really make much out. If you pause the video at any point, you're treated to <laughs> to this beautiful view of any of the foliage. Look, it's really, 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 really beautifully done. Some of it even reminds me of coral, if it was a leaf. There's a close-up there. And then we've got this segment with, uh, I believe this is the current ruler of Tuli Alal. Uh, you might have seen from the official trailer with the duel, with the uh, main, you know, main character, Wuklama, and your warrior of light. This shouldn't be taken as any kind of spoiler or anything, because the likelihood is that he's not going to be a boss here. As I said before, in a Stormblood expansion benchmark we had something similar where Titania was in a dungeon for some reason or oh, I think it was Susan was it Susano who was in Titania's arena so it was Yujimbo though so there you go so the warrior of light strikes out there he gets pummeled in return Kryl summons a Moogle through her Pictomancer powers which I really hope um you know the Moogle blast ability is something that we could do looking great and then, of course, oh, there we go. That's a better look at it. So it is this. It is a different animation. So this is White Mage then. Um, so yeah, it does look a bit like a Flatus 
but it's like sakura petals that sort of spin around. That's interesting. I forgot that they showed it again. I'm glad they did. It kind of has the same animation as Medica, though, you know what I mean? It's like a really quick Medica cast. Maybe this is Medica 4? Something like that? Medica 3, 4? I don't know. Like an upgrade for it? Interesting. Then we've got a Dark Knight. A lot of people are uh, interested with this one. Uh, in many ways, they're calling it Cloud Strife. Because it's a cross slash. I don't know if you saw that well enough. I personally think it looks cool. Yeah, I don't know. What do you think about that? We don't see the full thing, but it looks like it's obviously part of a global cooldown, uh, a horizontal slash. And then you have like this upwards vertical slash as well to make a cross. Let's slow this down a little bit. It'll make it a little bit easier to, uh, to actually appreciate. We'll mute that as well. Let's go back. Let's go back here, in fact. But yeah. A lot of people are like, hmm, not sure if I want it to look more like Warrior, but I don't think it's getting that way. I think it looks quite cool. Look at that heal, though. Oh, looks so good. And it obviously is a heal, I think. There is a Scholar there as well. But yeah, that sort of slash, very interesting. Then we have Scholar, which does this weird thing. At first, I thought this was an Astro when I first saw this until I was like, oh, that's actually a book. It summons these, like, gears, like the Epic of Alexander-style gears, and then does something to the enemy. So, some kind of offensive ability? Hmm? Don't know. Reaper, though. Reaper, though. Check this out. This is one you might uh, probably have seen from a trailer and gone, Whoa! Because I certainly did. It's one of the most flashy. Look at that! Piercing the enemy with giant red crystals that explode. There's the, uh, the scholar ability. Now watch. It looks so good, doesn't it? It really does. This one is cool. So the bard here is jumping up, firing an arrow, does a flip, and then fires the arrow that's kind of like suspended. And then it does like this massive AoE Rain of Arrows. So those of you who are missing Rain of Arrows. Will this do? <laughs> I don't know. I think it looks cool though. Oh, it looks like every anime with a bow ever. Doesn't it? Really cool. Uh, it does seem, seem a little bit similar to Empyrean Arrow. Something like that though. So we'll have to see. Maybe it's an upgrade from that, something like that. And then, of course, we have ourselves Slashy Slash from Viper. Looking great. And I believe that's about it. Apart from this move, which is demonstrated on Wook Lamart, which is a new warrior ability. So this is like where Wook Lamart jumps in front of a warrior of light. You can just about see it in the slowed down footage. And these like purple shields appear. So this is some form of protection, like a cover or something. I don't know. Maybe it looks a little bit like Vengeance. Hmm. Maybe it's an upgrade to Vengeance because it deflected the enemy's attacks. But we can't really read into that. That's just cinematography. Looks really cool though. Really cool. And of course, this is not all of the abilities, and we don't know what they do. This is just speculation. But it is fun to look at them, and the fact that they've made special attention to them gives you a sneak peek of what you might expect. And of course, we have the uh, amazing LB there. Well, at least I think it's the LB. Looks good, doesn't it? And then they clash together. And shoom, and then we got the samurai movie esque I won sort of thing, like the slash past. So yeah, that's pretty much the the uh, the benchmark. There's quite a lot more probably to take from it, but that's what I could sort of guess, and my my guesses for what's uh, what's coming forward. My favorite abilities then, honestly, I I'm excited for summoners. 
uh, because I want them to get Ramu. I think that's the thing that's probably tickled my fancy the most. Um, I am a good fan of Summoner. I like the Sage ability. I think that looks cool. Black Mage is going to be exciting to see how that goes. If it is an upgrade for Thunder. But yeah, it just looks great, doesn't it? And you get to test this out tomorrow on your own PC when this is uh, available for download. So um, obviously, as soon as we get access to that, I'm going to do a series of comparisons side by side. I've got uh, four or else five machines I can test it on. So we're going to have a look and uh, list the specs and see what kind of uh, impact that the, uh, the graphical update has had which we can have a look at that via the benchmark. We'll also do some female Rothgar character creation tomorrow. So if you're interested in that and maybe you're playing on a console and you can't access the benchmark, I will absolutely cover that as well. Anyway, let me know what you think about this one. If you're excited for Dawn Trail, if not, why not? What excites you most from these job abilities? What gets you the most excited? And I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye. Oh, it's so good. It's so close. Soon, soon we'll be walking there. Bye-bye.